Hello and welcome to BBC London this Wednesday afternoon with me, Frankie McCamley. Scotland Yard says it's made 60 arrests since last summer thanks to a new way of identifying the people who pose the biggest risk to women and girls. The force says it's using a data-led scheme similar to counter-terrorism operations that can analyse crime and prioritise interventions, allowing it to identify the top 100 suspects across London. Our Home Affairs correspondent Sonia Jessup sent this report. This you wanted what? for assault against your ex-partner. This was the moment police arrested a man they describe as a prolific abuser. He'd been accused of rape, of uh, serious uh, physical injuries, both at home and in a public place. Uh, he was actually reported uh, to the police by members of the public who saw his appalling treatment towards her in the street. Marcelino Goncalves was convicted last month, one of 24 offenders police say they've brought to justice since last August under a new scheme to target the most dangerous predatory offenders. The Met says last year in London, 35,000 suspects were reported to them for crimes against women and girls. They're trying to work out which ones to prioritise, which ones are the most dangerous, and they're applying a tactic which is used to target terrorists. What we do is we look at all the offences that people are suspected of in the last year and we give you a score for the severity of that offence. The most significant offenders, the most significant suspects go to the top of our list and we use all our tactics. We, we will target people just exactly the same way that we will investigate organised crime and investigate terrorism to bring the most serious offenders to justice. The Met's under pressure to do more to tackle violence against women and girls. The Casey Review last year found institutional misogyny in the force, and there have been scandals, including failing to identify dangerous predators within their own ranks. So the case yesterday involved a perpetrator breaking into a victim's address. The force says it's changing, expanding the Stalking Threat Assessment Centre, bringing charges in more rape investigations. We know how important it is to win over the confidence of the people of London and particularly women and children uh, where um, we know that in the past we've not provided the best service we can. He says that starts with targeting the most dangerous offenders. Sonia Jessup, BBC London. Now, you re may remember six months ago, a major fire that destroyed a multi-storey car park at Luton Airport, as well as hundreds of cars. Well, there are now calls for the government to change the law to improve the safety of these buildings. As it stands, car parks like these don't have fire repressant systems like sprinklers, and they only have to withstand heat for 15 minutes. Well, last night, Luton Airport said the new car park would have extra fire safety measures. But should these changes be illegal? requirement. Our correspondent Janine Machen has been following the story. The impact of losing my car um, was very profound for me. My car after my wheelchair is my independence, it's my way of getting around, it's my way of doing my work. In October last year Andrew Miller parked his car at Luton Airport and flew to Ireland where just days later he watched the news of the fire unfold. At that point we panicked. It took around 10 days uh, for the insurance to come to the view that the car was being written off uh, along with every other car in, in, in the car park. My insurer wasn't able to supply me with a uh, courtesy car um, because it, you know, they couldn't find a car that had the access requirements that I needed. I missed meetings, I missed a colleague's funeral and it took us weeks driving around the country my partner taking me around uh, to find a replacement car. And that's partly why Andrew wrote to his MP calling on the government to act. Car parks like the one at Luton don't have to have sprinklers or similar systems to limit the spread of fires. But Luton wasn't the first time we've seen an incident like this in the UK. And so Andrew says it's time the rules were changed. Given that there had already been a catastrophic fire very similar to Luton at Liverpool Arena, uh, in 2017, lessons hadn't seemed to be learned. I want to see the legislation changed to ensure that this doesn't happen to other people. His call is backed by structural engineers like Patrick Hayes, who say the existing regulations are no longer fit for purpose. Modern cars um, are heavier than some of the car parks have been designed for uh, and also more flammable because they contain more plastic uh, and also they contain plastic petrol tanks 
rather than metal ones, uh, which cars had earlier, um, but also the um, potential fire risk from EV vehicles. Uh, it's a different type of fire than petrol vehicles. The government told us fire safety for car parks is now part of a major building safety review. But Luton Airport says it's going to take action whether the legislation changes soon or not. It's now confirmed that when the car park is rebuilt, it will include a fire suppressant system. Six months on, the clear-up operation is still going on. No one lost their life here, but what happened was very costly. To passengers, to the airport, to insurers. And it seems the growing call for change is being heard. Janine Machin, BBC London News. Police are trying to find the owners of mobile phones that were snatched in central London on the morning of the 26th of March. The City of London Police says the phones were taken by a motorcyclist in and around the West End. Officers recovered 24 phones and still have another 13 to return to their owners. Now today, of course, is Eid and many of you are celebrating across the capital with prayers and gatherings to mark the end of Ramadan. It is one of the biggest celebrations in the Islamic calendar and the breaking of the fast. One imam has told us what he's most looking forward to eating and drinking. Well, I've got some jelly sweets I'm going to eat because I love sweets and um, I couldn't have any during the day because of the fasting. And coffee, I'm a coffee addict, so I'm going to have maybe five or six cups black coffee. Um, and then there's a family meal, a bit like the Christmas kind of, where the families get together for our Eid uh, lunch, a family gathering about one o'clock, um, where every, all the family get together and just reflect upon the month and then build on the good habits. And we want to hear from you. How and where are you celebrating? Get in touch and send us your pictures by emailing hello BBC London at bbc.co.uk or do scan that QR code on your screens now. We'll try and show as many of your photos on our evening programme. Now time for a look at the weather. Here's Kat. Hello there, good afternoon to you. After a dry and bright start to the day, we had decent spells of sunshine in places this morning, hazy at times. Uh, this afternoon looks to be far more unsettled. There's going to be a lot of cloud around with outbreaks of rain. It's also going to feel quite breezy, but uh, those winds are not as strong, of course, as they were yesterday. So here's your picture through the rest of today. Mainly cloudy skies with outbreaks of rain pushing in from the west. That rain will continue to track eastwards as the afternoon progresses, most of it clearing by the end of the day. We may just be left with one or two spots of drizzle and we're looking at highs of around 13 to 14 celsius and it will stay quite breezy and it continues breezy through this evening and overnight with largely cloudy skies there is just a chance by the end of the night we may get one or two spots of rain but uh, that rain will be very light in nature our temperatures will fall away to around 11 to 12 celsius so compared with this morning it's going to be a much milder start to our thursday but we start off thursday with mainly cloudy skies that cloud may be thick enough to produce a few spots of drizzle but as the afternoon it progresses there'll be some sunny spells around you can see that cloud breaking up quite nicely later on in the day and uh, in that sunshine our temperatures will lift up to around 19 celsius overall it's going to be feeling much warmer and temperatures potentially lifting even further on friday so we could be seeing highs of around 20 celsius on friday with a good deal of sunshine through the afternoon but towards the end of the week sunday it will be cooler. And do head to our website to find out how the Brutalist Barbican Centre has been transformed by a giant purple artwork. And don't forget, you can follow BBC London on social media, including Instagram and X, formerly Twitter, for lots more content. Riz has your evening news at 6.30. Until then, have yourself a lovely day. And there's one, less, one last thing to say. Eid Mubarak. <laughs>